This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2022 Forest River Salem travel trailer. Model 32BHDS, which is a bunkhouse. Uh, so this is a how-to video. It's, I'm not going to go through the floor plan. I'm just going to basically show you some of the features and, and tell you how they work, okay? Okay. So in the outside kitchen, you got running water and refrigerator. You also have this swing-around grill right here that swings around. Now, you have to uh, remember that you, uh, you have to connect. You, you get a rubber LP line with it, but you will connect it right to this quick connect, and the other end will go to the grill, okay? Um, you have regular scissor type stabilizers, but you have an added feature here. This is a strong arm. Basically, when it's when it's uh, engaged, you'll you'll um, it'll take away the some of the forward and rearward movement from it. It just stabilizes the trailer even more. So when you're moving the scissor jack, uh, the scissor stabilizer, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, up and down, you always want to loosen this T handle right here, so the inner tube moves freely through this outer tube. Um, once you get it down in the position you want it, then you can tighten it up. But always loosen these before you move them up and down. Of course, there's one on each jack, so one on each corner. Okay? That's the, that's the strong arm. All right, so, obviously you have a, an, a bathroom that it can be accessed from the outside, which is excellent. Um, power awning with a LED strip. Now, this right here, is a is a range hood vent so keep in mind that when you're venting to the outside using the range hood um, you'll want to push up on that baffle in there and just free it up so it flaps freely um, otherwise you can leave it shut when you're traveling or whatever but when you're if you're venting to the outside you got to free up that baffle so it flaps freely all right so you have power obviously uh, outdoor speakers this is your fresh water tank fill here. Now, of course, the most common way to get water to the trailer is uh, through the city water hookup. But in a case where you're at a campsite that does not have plumbing on it, there's no city water, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank and then use the onboard pump to pump it. And so all the plumbing will work just like you have city water, even though you'll be pumping it from the tank. So you have two options when it comes to water. Um, okay? This is just a vent for your furnace. It does get kind of a uh, kind of warm you can always get a bug screen a, a mud dauber screen to put over this which it won't make it totally cool but it won't be as hot in case you've got little kids or grandkids around whatever um, this is your water heater the thing to know about the water heater is that there's a rocker switch right here on and off in the lower left hand corner that controls the electric heating element that's behind this cover here so that's where you turn it on and off Always make sure that there's water in the water heater tank before you turn that on. You don't want to burn it out. So it's, it can be repaired. It's just, uh, you know, it's just a hassle you shouldn't have. So always make sure there's water in the tank. When you drain the tank, this is the drain right here. It takes an inch and a sixteenth six-point socket. So you want to, uh, you also need an extension and a, a ratchet or a bar to break it with. Um, but this, ha this is about six or eight inches long, actually. It's, got, it's a drain plug, but it's got an anode rod attached to the back. Okay, so keep that in mind. So um, the scenario would be like this. So you go out camping in the spring, right? And uh, you're not going to be using the trailer again until the fall. So you, you pull your drain plug and let the water heater uh, tank drain out. Always make sure you refill it before you turn it on in the fall so you don't damage it, okay? This is a, a, a pressure vent here. Never, never pull the plug when there's pressure in the water heater always open, you'll set off the city water or the water pump, whichever you're using. You'll open up the taps inside, hot water tap, to let the pressure, yeah, open them both up, and uh, let the pressure out of the system, and then you'll take this out. Otherwise, it'll shoot out there like a cannonball, followed by a gallon or so of water. So, uh, remember that. Also remember never to work on this or vent it or drain it while the water's hot. You don't want to scal scald yourself or, or worse. So, okay? All right. Your, um, Steps, you can adjust the legs independently of each other to the terrain. This is your pass-through storage here. This is your hamper bag. It's actually accessed from the bedroom. Alrighty. This is your for your stabilizer jacks. It's a three-quarter inch socket that goes on a, a drill. Okay. This is in case you want to 
operate your, you know, let's say you have problems with your with your awning. This is a tool you use to help you get out of trouble, to so you can uh, you can um, deal with it. The best way is to look at the online video or read about it at the time you're doing it. If you ever have to, it's a long shot. It hardly ever happens, but you do have it. This right here, this crank, this is for the power tongue jack. So um, this is your power tongue jack right here. Um, if this was ever to fail for any reason, you could pull this plug and that crank will go, put, go right on there and you can crank it manually. So that's another feature. So uh, that crank is just for this in case you need it to get you out of trouble. Okay, you have two LP tanks which are full. You have a deep cycle marine battery, which is brand new. And then you have a kill switch for your battery also. So when you put it into storage for a long period of time, you can actually just shut that off. So it disconnects the battery from the from the trailer. You will also have a, uh, this, this is the hose I told you about for the, the LP hose I told you about for your furnace. You're also going to have a, uh, uh, a dump hose in here and, and an adapter for your power cord. Okay, so let's move down. This is obviously your power cord here. It's 30 feet and 30 amp. We do give you a reducer like I just stated to go down to 20 in case you need to park in your driveway and, and uh, you need the lights on and stuff so you can pack it up. All right, so you have your valves here and more and another valve here. Those are both gray valves and then you have your black valve there. Black is toilet water and waste, the gray are sink and shower water. Okay, so let's say you dump your black tank and then your gray, right? So you leave the black tank valve open like it states on this sticker here. Then you can put the hose at the dump station right onto here. Turn it on and it'll spray the inside of your black tank out. To clean off the sensor so you get a good accurate reading that sort of thing so it's a, if there's a working hose at the dump station it's a good thing to do your city water hookup uh, is right here I showed you the fresh water fill on the other side this is your city water hookup most common way to get water this has a, a light so you can always tell that you know if you're diagnosing electrical problems you, you don't have you can just look at the LED to see where if you're getting power to this point that sort of thing okay this is just cable and satellite through I'll let that one up pop it right now. It's cable and satellite through. It's just two coaxes that go to the entertainment area. All right. Let me see what else we have here. Okay, I showed talk to you about the grill that flips, folds around. Um, you have a, uh, this housing tells us it's pre-wired for a backup camera. So you can always purchase a Furion camera that fits in there and you have a backup camera. Uh, while we're looking up, the manufacturer states you should inspect your roof every 90 days. So you want to go up there or have somebody go up there and look around, make sure there's no cracking or separation where water can get in. Make sure there's no damage to the roofing material or to the roofing attachments by, um, you know, low branches or, or road debris flipping up there. You just give it a good inspection. Odds are you won't have to do anything, but that's why you're inspecting it, just to, you know, take care of your investment, make sure it uh, stays good and dry. Okay. All right, so here we are. Um, this is your control panel. You have your slide out and your um, your power awning. Uh, never leave the awning out unattended. Um, you can see it right there. I also can turn the light on there. So just never leave it out unattended. You don't want it to get damaged. Um, your your levels here. Your battery's charged. Fresh water's got a third in it. Black is, well, he's still prepping this, so it has a little bit, we'll dump them, and that'll all, you'll have a little bit of fresh, and the rest of these will be empty. This is a dimmer for your lights, you just run your finger over it, that's all. Okay, excuse me. Okay, so, GFCI here, keep in mind that all the plugs in the trailer are wired through a GFCI. Uh, okay, so, your TV will go here, if you use one. There's a backer plate there so you can hang a good bracket. If you're going to get a bracket for it, try and spend the extra money and get the one that locks into place so it doesn't flip around when you're traveling. If you don't get that, you have to use a strap. So it just the strap works fine. It just sort of hangs there. It's, it's kind of unsightly. But um, if you can get one that, that has the, the lock on it, that's a way to go. All right, so this is the signal booster for your digital antenna right here. You see you can shut it off, but your TV will be hooked into here and you always want that on when you're using the antenna. This is just telling us that this is pre-wired for a, um, a public Wi-Fi booster with a, with a router. 
So the router would sit in here, and then you have an antenna on your roof for wi for Wi-Fi, and that's all it's telling you is pre-wired for that. There's also going to be a some kind of a, a port on the roof where the uh, antenna would attach to. If you're interested, you go to KingConnect.com and uh, look at their products. All righty. So sound bar. This has FM radio, no AM. Uh, it has Bluetooth, so you can stream wirelessly with your um, your uh, from your phone or your tablet, whatever. Um, it could have a USB here, so you could stream all your music, whatever, off a of USB if you wanted to. This HDMI is an N, so let's say you got a portable Blu-ray player to. What well, if you have your TV hooked up? You got a portable Blu-ray player. Well, you could set it right here, and then uh, go into the system through this HDMI, for example. Two speaker zones, one and two. One is inside the trailer, two is outside the trailer. You also have um, remotes with, uh, here they are, with this trailer. So, this large remote is for your sound bar, right here. And then this one is for your, your uh, fireplace. Let me show you that. The fireplace works on AC power, regular campground power. And it's a good space heater too, so on those days where you don't need the furnace, you don't quite need the furnace, you can save on your LP by just using this uh, instead. So we turn it on, obviously. Um, zero, low, high, those are fan speeds. It has a, uh, you can change the color of the crystals. You can change the flame. Like so. I'm trying to find what I like here, that, that's pretty good there. So uh, you can do that, plus it also has a timer on it. So that's your remote there. A really good space heater. Okay. So let's go this way. The microwave works like any other microwave. This is your range hood with the vent on it. Remember I told you about the baffle on the outside. If you're going to use the fan, you want that baffle to uh, flap freely. You got a light here. I don't know if he's got the, the gas on or not. Let me look here. If not, I'll just talk you through it. Um, so you've got your sparker here, you turn this clockwise to spark. You've got three knobs here for three burners, and then this last one is for the oven. So let me see if we can, we got any gas here, yeah. So it's that simple. You just put it to light and then spark it by turning that clockwise. Now, the oven itself is a little bit different. Um, all the way at the back down there on the bottom is a pilot light. Maybe I can, see, maybe you can see it spark here. Yeah. So it sparks back there. So what you do is you go to the oven knob, you go to the picture of the flame, which means pilot light, you depress it, you keep it depressed during the whole lighting process. Then you're going to spark by turning this clockwise until you see a flame down here. Uh, after the flame lights, you still hold this in for another 10 or 15 seconds to heat up the thermocouple. Then you're going to go to whatever operating temperature you want, it'll cycle like an oven does. Um, when you shut it off, the flame goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. You also have lights here, like that an ambient light and a, a useful light to also. Always travel with this closed. Okay, so your refrigerator, first of all, has a lock on it. You always want to keep the lock engaged so your doors don't fly open in transit and get dinged. Um, this is a 12-volt DC refrigerator, so it works off a DC current. So it'll run off the battery or off the, uh, if you're, you're plugged in and it has the power converter going. So you can actually pull it down the road because with it on because you're, it's going to be taking power from your battery but your, your battery is going to be being charged by the, the alternator on your tow vehicle. So you can actually do that. While I'm down here, this is, this is um, where you would winterize the trailer. Your water pump is back here and your, your uptake hose for antifreeze. So you'd have to take these two screws out. Those are number two square headed screws. All the, all the screws on the trailer are number two square headed screws. And also over here, you can remove this divider by the, using those two screws, and back there is your, is, your, is your water heater. And the bypass valves are on the back, and uh, so you can, you can bypass it and, and uh, switch it back to camping mode from right back there. Your thermostat is real simple. You just, you just hit, the, hit the, bar, the mode bar to light it up, and then you can scroll through. I'm not going to go, let me put it back where it was here. When you're using the air conditioner, Always try to use it on auto. When they give you an option for fan speed, always use auto. Um, so uh, heat is the, is the propane furnace. 
Uh, the next option is a uh, fan, which is your air conditioner running without the compressor. It just circulates air. And then, of course, cool is your air conditioning. Like I said, always go with auto for the fan speed if they give you the option. This is your carbon dioxide LP gas detector right here. If it goes off, you take everybody outside, obviously, open the door, leave it open, shut the gas off of the front, figure out what's going on. It should always be green like it is. If it's not, get it serviced. Uh, so make sure anytime you look at this and you're, you're powered up and everything, it, should, it runs off. It's hardwired to the battery right now. Um, so unless you shut your battery off, it should always be glowing um, green. So if not, get it serviced. That's obviously important. Okay. Let me come over here. Uh, let me stand up here. I don't have the light on. Okay. So this device here is the power converter. So what this does is converts AC to DC power. So when you're plugged in, uh, this is the AC side, so it's one, 120 AC circuit breakers like you'd see at home, and then they're all labeled, of course. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side, so you got 12 volt fuses, and they're all labeled. These are the two master fuses. Um, if you ever have a, a, the 12 volt side ever goes out, if you had a big power surge or a lightning strike or something, always check these, because that's where the, hopefully that's where the problem is, because that, they would just be doing their job if they pop. So those are the masters. Also, if these ones, not the masters, but if these uh, were to pop, they'll actually light up and you can see them through this tinted plastic. Also, this is a battery tender. So as long as you're plugged in, it's gonna, it's gonna check your battery, see how much energy it needs. And if the battery's charged up, for example, it'll just trickle a couple amps to maintain it. If it's low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs to keep your battery charged. So when you're plugged in, this power converter charges the battery, and of course when you're going down the road, your tow vehicle's alternator does that. All right. You can drop this table down and uh, turn this into a bed, of course. These, uh, this back cushion can switch positions. It shows you on this, this piece right here, this paper here. So, uh, Also, you can jackknife this one flat, and it, uh, it, um, it can turn into a bed also. You have storage under here. Okay. All right, so let me, let's move on. Uh, smoke detector, of course. This is the, the slide out, the button for your, for your bunk room slide. This one's a slide, obviously, and this is, this is the, uh, the switch for it. Um, so you have a couch here, but you can, you can lay that out flat to turn it into a bed. Also, you can put this in the, in the up position. You see that cleat there. You can actually push this up and lock it into there so it gets out of your way when you're sitting there watching TV. And then, of course, another, um, another bunk here. And then you have TV hookups, power, and, and hookup right there. So, all right. So you got three bunks with a potential. Well, you have two bunks now, but the bottom, one, the bottom couch will turn into another bed. Uh, USB hookups for charging. So, it's everything you need. And then some, always, excuse me, always remember the, the furnace heat comes out of the floor and the air conditioning comes out of the ceiling. Okay, now we'll go into the bathroom. And this is the switch for the slide room. Okay, so, let's see here. The sink and the shower work like any other sink and shower, okay? The toilet is an RV toilet, um, so you got to remember this is the flush pedal right here. You can't use it dry. By dry, I'm talking about the, the black tank that's directly below there, right? So when you get to the campground, you hook up your power and your water. You come in here, you put a dose of chemical in the bowl, and then step on the pedal and hold it down so you put at least a gallon of water in the tank. Then it's all ready to be used. You can't use it dry because the smell will be um, extreme and also uh, it can get clogged up, so you always have to have chemical and water in it, okay? Um, you have a fan, obviously. Okay, I think that covers it, so. Let me go up to the bedroom now. Okay. So the bedroom, it has a TV hookups here, and there's a backing plate there so you can put a bracket on there so you can look at it when you're laying in bed. You can, um, this is the escape window. You just push this all the way through, right? 
and then you grab hold of this tab and pull the screen out and you can escape in an emergency that way. All right, there's storage underneath the bed. Here, let me show you. You have some containers and then that, that's the pass-through storage up there. Okay, and I told you that, I showed you the, um, the hamper, that's, that's right here. Okay, all right then. Let me look around to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. I think I covered it all. Okay, so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Um, please remember what I said about the manufacturer uh, stating every 90 days to check the seals, go up on the roof. People, generally speaking, don't check the roof enough, so make sure you take care of that. And right now, the antifreeze has been purged from the system. This is dewinterized, so it's been replaced with fresh water. Your water heater is in camping mode and it's full right now, so uh, you're all ready to go, okay? Thank you.